one of the reasons why we see such high 30-day readmission rates is because so many patients leave the hospital still wet. We can see here that 20% of patients leave the hospital after gaining weight after a hospitalization. Completely counterintuitive. People should be losing weight, not gaining weight. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> and then you can see that 30% of people only lose a few pounds, between zero and, and, and five pounds. So that essentially means that patients are still leaving the hospital very, very wet. But this is some work that my colleague, Dr. Alala, did looking at those patients who were very well treated and left the hospital while they were dry. And we see that even those patients who are very well decongested with a low or zero orthedema score, no orthopnea, no edema on physical examination, no symptoms of, of congestion, when they come back early for the, their visit, they are already developing high-grade orthedema. So you've seen the slide, now three out of the four speakers. We'll see if we can make it a, a streak. And uh, this was a, a little schema that we developed to try to chart out a patient's journey between home, the emergency department, the observation unit, the heart failure ward in the hospital. And what we're gonna focus on tonight is this piece here, this after the, the discharge home, that early rapid follow-up uh, visit to the uh, heart failure clinic. So we started a project a little more than a year ago, a pilot project. We just completed an analysis of a year's worth of data that hopefully we will also be able to publish and share with you. This was work that I did uh, along with my colleagues, Dr. Lala, Dr. Bargash, Dr. Mitter, who are here in, in the audience, and so have to give them credit for working really hard to pull that data together. What I'm gonna share with you tonight is some of the preliminary data that we did in advance of this meeting, but it all started with a hypothesis. And that hypothesis was that those individuals who return to the clinic, the rapid follow-up clinic, which is a nurse practitioner-led heart failure clinic, within a week of discharge from the hospital, that they'll enjoy a benefit from that visit and that their 30-day readmission rates will be lower than those patients who don't take advantage of that visit. But beyond that, we also thought that if we were to use the RED system and be able to directly measure lung fluid content, that those individuals who were seen in the rapid follow-up with the use of the RED system will have a lower readmission rate. So you've also seen this. Uh, I just want to echo Dr. Uh, Abraham's comment that you do need to have an algorithm. And this is a great guide for us to understand how wet the lungs are. And then based upon that, we can develop an algorithm. I'll share the algorithm that, that we used with you tonight. And we said that if you have a REDS reading of less than 20%, you are dry. And the most appropriate intervention would be to hold diuretics. Very critically, although we're talking a lot about diuretic use, I will point out that for those individuals who came to this rapid follow-up clinic who had normal lung water, between 21 and 35 percent, it was our focus to maintain their diuretics, to prevent that late accumulation of fluid that I shared with you from Dr. Lala, but more importantly that we need to use this as an opportunity early on advance guideline-directed medical therapy. Now, for those patients who are wet with a, lung, uh, with a REDS reading between 36 and 45 percent, we increased their diuretics. And if they were very wet, greater than 46 percent or greater than 50 percent, we might consider using a dose of intravenous furosemide in the clinic or even, God forbid, readmit them to hospital. So let me just show you a patient example before I share with you the data. This is one gentleman who came back for that early rapid follow-up visit. And his lung fluid content was, his REDS reading was 45 at that initial visit. And we said, you know what, according to our algorithm, we might need to admit you, but instead, we're gonna increase your diuretics. So he came to us taking 80 milligrams of furosemide once a day, we increased it to 80 milligrams twice a day. And also as part of our algorithm, we said, if we're gonna increase diuretics, we wanna see you back within a week or two. And so he did, he came back, he had a, another visit and had another REDS reading. And this time, he was a little bit more decongested, but still appeared to have uh, an elevated lung fluid content around 38%. So we increased the furosemide even more. We doubled it, went to 160 milligrams twice a day. And then with this third visit, which was now about three or four weeks later, he was coming into the green zone. We we're feeling a little bit more comfortable with him. And now, according to our algorithm, we have to redevelop an algorithm. What do we do now? Do you keep the same diuretic? Do you drop the diuretic down? Do you increase your guideline-directed medical therapy? And this is something that we are beginning to, to work through, and we're gonna look at what we did over the course of a year so we can refine that algorithm a little bit more. So here's our data. We had 209 patients who were referred to the rapid follow-up clinic, and we had various numbers of patients show or no-show. 
If we focus on those patients who didn't take advantage of that early rapid follow-up visit, we had about 15% of the patients didn't show, which I think is also a testament to some of our transitional care planning that 85% actually did show up. And if we were just to focus on the readmission rates between those two individuals, individual groups, the ones who did not show up had a 22% readmission rate, and those who uh, were seen by our nurse practitioner had a 15% readmission rate. Significant benefit to seeing a nurse practitioner early after discharge. Now if we look at that, that group, that compliant group that actually kept their appointment and look to see did, whether or not there was value to using the RED system, we can say that there was. For those individuals who were managed with the use of the RED system, we saw a 10% readmission rate compared to a 17% readmission rate from those individuals who were not managed with the system. And I don't want to say too much about our final analysis, but we are now seeing readmission rates with a, a group of uh, a year's worth of data being brought down into the single digits. Really phenomenal. So this is just shown here that we were to realize in this small group of, of uh, patients a 38% reduction in 30-day all-cause readmission with the use of the RED system. I can also share with you some of the observations that, that we learned from this experience. The first was that this was very easy to deploy. It takes about three minutes to properly size the system and, and then to take a, a reading. The reading itself takes about 90 seconds and about 90 seconds to do the fitting. Um, patients loved it. The patients loved the fact that right there in the clinic they can be told like, yes, you're wet or, or, or yes, you're dry. They liked that and they could actually be empowered in their own care. And the last thing, and this is very important, particularly if you're managing a very, very busy clinic in the morning or in the afternoon, this was not disruptive to our workflow. There were some reasons why we couldn't measure lung fluid content in everyone. Um, there were some size restrictions where the, the sensors do not get aligned if you're really, really big. And so, I don't know, in Chicago, we, we have some large people in New York and they seem to find our way to our clinic, but we used a BMI of, of between 38 and 40 as our cutoff, and if it were bigger than that, we weren't able to use the RED system. We had some pa patients who had a Hickman or a perm cath, and we weren't able to apply the, the vest in them. We had a couple people who didn't want to take off their life vest. They were so afraid that if they didn't have their life vest, they were going to have an arrhythmia. <laughs> and then we had a couple people who just declined, one or two. So in conclusion, I think this early preliminary experience shows that uh, follow-up in a, in a nurse practitioner run clinic is associated with lower rates of 30-day readmission, and that the use of RED system on top of this demonstrated about a 40% lower all-cause readmission rate. And so some further experience with point-of-care testing could provide further insight, insights into the frequency of congestion early after heart failure discharge and reductions in hospital admission and how we can best optimize medical therapy. So thanks again for being here tonight and thanks for allowing me to take up some of your time.